Hey friends, John Green from Gun Owners Action League. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today, a brief overview of Massachusetts ammunition laws and regulations as it pertains to the LTC or FID card holder. So today's show, we'll talk about the definitions. We'll follow that up with possession, transport, caveat, question mark, and storage. So what is ammunition? Well, under Chapter 140, Section 121, it's a cartridge, it's a shot shell, the primers, the propellant, the shot, the wad, the bullet, the case, any part of the cartridge or shot shell is ammunition. And we also have to include in that pepper sprays and tear gas cartridges as well. So what we see in these photos, all representative of what is defined as ammunition here in the Commonwealth. So who can possess ammunition and under what circumstances? Well, for a Massachusetts resident to possess ammunition or again, any part of that cartridge or shot shell, they must have an LTC or an FID card or be under the direct supervision of somebody else that has that FID or LTC. When it comes to pepper spray, remember we got the pepper spray laws changed back in 2014. If you're 18, and you could obtain an FID card. You don't need an FID card to purchase and possess pepper spray. If you're 15 to 17, you must have an FID card to purchase and possess pepper spray. So buy pepper spray for your loved ones. Non-residents may also be in possession of pepper spray and ammunition for the purposes of hunting or target shooting or competition. But the caveat with that is they must would be able, excuse me, they must be able to get an FID card if they were a Massachusetts resident. Keep in mind, Massachusetts does not issue a non-resident or a temporary FID card. We only issue the temporary LTC to non-residents. How about this? This is really interesting. Do you know that there are no statutory regulations or laws pertaining to citizens within the Commonwealth transporting ammunition? We've searched high and low with fire code and statute. Granted, commercial entities, the distributors shipping ammunition to your local gun shop, right? they're going to fall under DOT regulations. But the Massachusetts LTC or FID card holder, there is no guidance there. So we'll look at best practices. Here we see a couple of different examples of ammunition containers, certainly uh, applicable to throw a lock on those. But again, not required. We can't find anything in mass statute or regulation with regard to guidance on transporting ammunition to and from the range or from the gun shop back to your home. So do keep that in mind. Ammunition storage. Well, we've had some changes in the ammunition storage and possession regulations going back to about 2012. If you're interested in, in finding more information out about ammunition regulations in Massachusetts, it might be easier for you to do a Google search on 527CMR 13.04 to 13.11. Uh, it was spelled out using words. The new fire code under 527CMR 1.00 uses a table with greater than and less than signs. So 527CMR 1.00 covers possession limits in single family dwellings and multiple family dwellings as well as how much and how we are to store ammunition in those facilities. So an individual with an LTC or an FID card in a single family dwelling can store upwards of 25,000 combined rounds. If we look at this slide, we see not 10,000 rounds of, of rimfire ammunition or center fire ammunition or 5,000 rounds of shot shells. We see 9,999, 9,999, and 4,999. And that's because the new CMR uses a table with the greater than and less than signs. So theoretically, it's not 10,000, it's less than 10,000, so do be aware of that. The other applicable part here, very important and a bonus for those of us that reload, we can now have two boxes of primers. Imagine that, so we see 9,999 primers. Typically when we buy a small arms primers for our, for our pistol cartridges and shot shells and, and, and rifle cartridges, they come 5,000 to a box. Prior to this CMR change back in 2012, we could only have 1,000 loose primers. Now we can have uh, two boxes or less than 10,000 primers in a single family dwelling. Not more than two pounds of black powder. And finally, when it comes to how are we to store ammunition in our homes or dwellings, well, right at the bottom of that slide, we see verbatim out of the regulation, 
shall be stored in the original containers and such containers shall be stored in a locked cabinet, closet, or box when not in use. It doesn't talk to the integrity of these storage devices. Personally, I use an old metal filing cabinet with a, with a padlock on it to store my reloading components and my ammunition. Take a look with a permit. Now, with a permit, the permit is issued by the town's fire chief. It has nothing to do with law enforcement, nothing to do with Firearms Records Bureau. It's issued because it's a fire code by the fire chief in, in your town. And the duration and fee for that permit runs the gamut. We've heard $10 for 10 years. We've heard $50 per year in various municipalities, so keep that in mind. Anyways, with that permit, we can store upwards of 130,000 rounds of ammunition. Now, the fire chief does have the ability to lessen those quantities and actually inspect your area where you're storing this, so do keep that in mind. Oftentimes, we get questions from our members. Well, what if there are multiple licenses in the household? 527CMR 1.00 deals with the dwelling. It doesn't deal with multiple licenses. Well, can I store you know, double quantities in my shed or my, my um, barn? We don't know. You'd have to work that out with your fire chief. So ultimately, pretty brief uh, synopsis on this. Not legal advice. If you do need legal advice, please take a look at our website and contact one of the great attorneys that helps goal members and non-goal members you know, find their way through Massachusetts gun law and regulation. Take care.